Today on Hands On Tech, I was able to get out and spend a little bit more time outside with an e-bike. Oh my goodness. Van Move has a nice e-bike out there that I think you will find interesting. Check it out. Hands On Tech is brought to you from LastPass Studios. Using the same password everywhere is a security nightmare waiting to happen. LastPass puts you in control of your online life by storing all of your unique passwords in a secure encrypted vault. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Tech is brought to you by IT Pro TV. Don't let another year go by. Get a head start on your IT career with IT Pro TV today. Visit itpro.tv slash twit for an additional 30% off all consumer subscriptions for the lifetime of your active subscription. Use code twit30 at checkout. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, and this is Hands on Tech here on Twit TV. Hope y'all are doing well. I'm unbelievable as always. It's been an interesting mm, couple months here between the temperatures starting to, to dip down and change and get a little bit cold here in NorCal. And then you have a bunch of rain popping in all of a sudden. And yeah, it's been quite bizarre trying to get myself adjusted during this interesting time of the pandemic, especially when it comes to considering my personal wellness and personal health so I can get out and exercise. But speaking of exercise, I was able to get in touch with the folks at Van Moof because they had a very, very interesting product out there that I wanted to try out uh, to help, you know, get myself into decent shape with cardiovascular and get outside a little bit more. And what this product is, it's the Van Moof S3 e-bike. Yes, this thing is, oh my goodness, I call it the Steed. What a beautiful piece of equipment. Van Moof has a couple of bikes. I was sent the S3 to try out. They have another one called the X3, uh, which is a slightly different model. And it's a little bit smaller than the S3. The S3 is designed for the larger, taller bike rider, someone like myself. I'm 6'2", um, and quite frankly, I think it's a little large for most people. They say that this bike is rated for anyone that's 5'8", or, or or taller. Uh, I think 5'8 might be pushing it just a touch because that frame is pretty tall. And the and when I'm sitting on it, I have my saddle adjustment pretty low uh, to where it's comfortable and a, a better ride for me. And it still seems like it's a bit of a stretch for someone my height. So I can't say I recommend the S3 for someone that's not as, not as tall as I am. But if you are, this is the way to go. Okay, so the S3 comes with this beautiful uh, unibody frame. The electronics are all piped uh, inside of the piping and tubing of the bike. So when you look at the bicycle, it is fairly nondescript. Some uh, e-bikes out there look like they have little motors sitting right in the middle of the frame. You would never know this was an e-bike. All of the cabling is run through the tubing, even to your brake cables. Your brake cables on a traditional street bike or mountain bike tend to, you know, wrap from the, the calipers and the clamps and go down the sides of the tube. But in this case, they, they go through the tubing and goes down to the different calipers. Uh, speaking of the brakes, these are hydraulic brakes. So they are high performance. So if you're riding around and going 20 mile an hour or faster or what have you, and you need to make a quick stop, you hit these brakes, you are going to stop. There is no locking up. There is no sputtering and just hoping these things will grab. These are really, really high performance hydraulic brake systems here. The grips on these handlebars feel really good if you wanted to ride around for a couple hours. Uh, the cushion uh, is actually quite comfortable and it's not something that feels, it's not something that's going to make your hands feel all slippery and sweaty like some handlebars will do. I've, I used to ride mountain bikes quite often back in my air quotes, younger days. And that was always a concern for me. I used to have to wear gloves because the grips on my handlebars would just get a little bit too unsafe for me because they would get so slippery. That's not the case with this S3 here. Uh, the bike does come with a, a, a lithium ion battery to charge it up to, so you can use the pedal assist. 
And that's one bit of a drawback on the S3 because the battery is, is tightly integrated inside of the tube and in, in, in the, the frame, which looks good. But if you need to charge the battery up, you have to literally put your whole bike over to wherever your power charging uh, station is. You can't just remove the battery and charge the battery individually. So you have to park the bike somewhere and plug it in, just like you would if you were doing, say, a Tesla. I've been watching a couple uh, different uh, reviews, and a lot of people have said the same thing as far as this is being more like a Tesla of bikes, just because of the way this thing is designed. It is so sleek. It is so smooth. Even down to the way you charge it up, you literally have to put it in its own corner to charge it up. It's a standard AC power cord, but it still just seems like a bit of a pain in the butt to make sure that you can uh, plug it in with the whole unit sitting right there instead of removing the battery. It comes with standard pedals. It comes with a headlight and a tail light. Uh, it also comes with a couple reflectors depending on where you live and you can attach those. I didn't attach the reflectors here. I didn't think it was necessary because it has the integrated tail light and headlights on it uh, that you can turn off and on or just, you know, leave it on all the time, what have you. And with the regarding the headlight, I did like the fact that it's something that's, that's attached to the actual tubing of the bike. So if I turn my handlebars to the right or to the left, that didn't necessarily mean the uh, headlamp was going to turn with my handlebars. It's going to turn with the body. This is good with you know, depending on um, the type of trails that you're riding and the time of day that you're riding, because sometimes just because you turn your, your steering, your handlebars, you don't necessarily need the light to dart over to where you're trying to turn the, the handlebars. So it's a pretty nice feature on this. I thought this was very well thought through. Assembly on this is pretty standard. Uh, if you get the, the, the full box is literally just taking two pieces out of the box. And one of those pieces is the frame. The other piece is the front wheel. And this is easy to assemble. It comes with a couple of different tools to assemble the, the to add the wheel to the front fork. And it's really not that difficult. I did enjoy the fact that they made this as effort free for the people that's just wanting to get their bike and get out on the road. So how was riding the S3? You know, I've talked about what this thing looks like and all of the beautiful designs. And yeah, is it a big old speed of a bike with 28 inch, 28 inch wheels and just looks really, really good. But looks doesn't mean squat if the ride is uncomfortable. First off, the saddle on this bike, uh, that's going to depend on you. The saddle on any bicycle is going to depend on you. Ideally, you don't want the saddle of a bike to be too narrow because of, of just the, the comfort of it messing with your glutes and your private areas. You, you, you got to be safe <laughs> with that. And if you have it too wide, the saddle can give you some blisters if you're riding for an extended amount of time. But in this case, the saddle seems to be, it was okay for me. I probably would go with the slightly more narrow um, saddle on this, but for the most part, I think this is okay for the cost of the, of the bicycle. The handlebars on this, I think they are I think they were set just right for me because I have long arms. The beauty of this particular bike is you can raise the handlebars pretty easily with its tools inside of the boxing uh, to make it a little bit more optimal for you. Because depending on how you ride, this is a bit of a cruiser bike. So you don't necessarily want to be leaning over uh, as you're riding this bike because this is a cruiser slash commuter bike. This isn't a street racer or anything. So you want those handlebars to be lifted up to give you a much more comfortable ride over an extended amount of time. The suspension on this bike does not exist because it's not that type of bicycle. So if you're going to ride over some rough areas in your town, you're going to feel the bumps and things like that. But it's not terribly bad as long as you have decent pressure in your tires. Uh, it, it's The handling is totally fine. But again, don't try to make this an extreme bike because that's not what this is designed for. This is designed for the commuter. This is designed for the, the person living in town, trying to go from point A to point B and back to point A. That's about it. Nothing extreme here. 
I do like the fact that it comes with some fenders over the tires because that means you can ride in wet weather. You can ride this e-bike in the rain safely um, because everything is really, really covered up and secured. And it has the fenders on it to help protect you from getting splashes from the tires, whether it's mud and extra water and things like that. That's another very, very nice touch. Now, I was able to, to get just a little bit of time here and there, depending on the weather, and get out and ride this thing more. So let's take a quick look at just the riding. Okay, so riding this thing, very, very, very interesting because some people, they have an understanding about e-bikes and they get this whole idea that it's pretty much going to make you just scoot along without having to do any of the work. That's not the case with the Van Moof S3. This is a e-bike, but it's an assisted, it's a pedal assistant bike. It's not a moped. It has a little automatic throttle on it and so forth, but this is not something that's just going to do all of the work and take you up the hills and things like that. So as I'm riding along, it is a great ride. It's pretty smooth. Uh, this particular version is definitely a commuter version. This is not something that you want to take out on the trail uh, for like, MTB mountain bike riding or something like that. This is definitely geared more towards the in-town commuter, if you will. Somebody that doesn't want to buy a car and pay for parking and things like that, you will get great value out of this bike. The experience overall, again, is pretty daggum good. The shifting on it is automatic as it goes through three different gears and the shifting, you never really feel it. You can hear it for half a second, uh, but the experience while you're pedaling, there's no jolt or anything like that. It's pretty smooth for the shifting. Uh, it's because it's not a chain, it's a belt that's driving this. And everything is just so smooth and well-designed from the folks at Van Moot. Really, really impressed by this. But now I got to continue to get on back to the studio. This episode of Hands-On Tech is brought to you by IT Pro TV. Earn IT certifications through IT Pro TV's online training courses with over 5,800 hours of IT training. They have some big news this month. They are now part of ACI Learning. Together, this new entity is able to train you in IT in any modal, online, instructor-led, virtual, or on the campus. Go to itpro.tv slash twit and use code twit30 to receive 30% off on all consumer subscriptions. That's itpro.tv slash twit and use code twit30 it pro tv build or expand your it career and enjoy the journey all right so now that's the that's the experience with riding this bike and since this is an e-bike you have to assume that it's going to be some sort of a mobile app designed for this bike and the mobile app on this is it's, it's pretty straightforward i love it it allows you to configure the gearing system in it you, know, you have a couple different levels of gearing i believe you have four different levels of of uh setting the gears up for whether it's a flat area or a hill a hilly area something that's going to be more more comfortable for you and even with the actual pedal assist there's a there's a couple different levels of that to figure out if you want more assist or less assist and i've cranked it all the way up to the most assistance on here and it's good but you still have to keep in mind you are going to be doing the work on this bicycle so don't think this is just going to be a moped the software was recently updated to turn off the feature um that allowed you to override your regional speed limit settings on here. Here in California, and particularly in the US, you do have a speed limit. In, in California, the speed limit is set to 20 miles per hour, which is totally fine as um, far as an e-bike goes. So if you are pedaling along on the trail and you want to hit your assistance on it, it's going to speed you up, but it's going to cap out at 20 miles per hour uh, with the speed assistance. You can pedal faster than that if you want, but there is a cap on the actual e-assistance. So just keep that in mind. Personally, I don't think you need to be going that much faster on a bike if you're just doing commuting because of your own safety, because of the safety of others around you. But that's just me. You do you. I'm not going to do that. But yeah, the 20 mile per hour cap is, is 
fine for me for my use cases. And more with the app, it has a security feature built into it. Uh, the bike has a what's called a kick lock on the side, uh, on the rear hub, where you just kick the lock to lock it in place and secure it down. It's a little bit finicky because you have to line up the spokes a certain way and things like that, and it's okay, but you just kick the lock on it and it locks it in place, and it gives you a bit of a uh, theft deterrent system through the mobile app, if you try to move this back while it's locked down, it will just give you a bit of a chirp and a yell and sounds like a, a, a puma roaring or something <laughs> and tries to scare you and say, hey, do not touch this bike. This bike is locked down. Uh, you can attempt to keep doing this and take the bike and it will continue to lock and continue to yell. And I believe after three tries, it goes into its super duper Fort Knox lockdown mode and engages the the um, theft tracking system that's offered by Van Moof, just in case someone tries to walk off with your bicycle. And if this happens, they have what they, they consider pretty much a like a almost 100% guarantee of getting it back because these bikes have GSM in them. So it's trackable via the cell phone towers out there and they can ping and see where this thing is pretty quickly. Uh, when I spoke with the folks at Van Moof, they said they've had a couple instances where here in the San Francisco area that, that some bikes were grabbed and people were trying to take them up on the other side of town and they were able to get them back pretty easily there in the uh, metro area area of San Francisco because of this actual tracking on it. That's an additional cost. I believe it's another $300 uh, for that service. It's like 300 bucks a year. And, and it's, I think that's something that might be quite useful for you. If they're unable to retrieve your bike, if you have this particular coverage, they will give you another bike um, in, you know, to, to replace yours based on the same uh, price and model. But anyway, this thing is a really nice bike, a nice e-assist bike, something that's perfect for someone like me. I miss my days of riding my mountain bikes. I used to have an awesome track. I used to have a couple of Haros and I love riding mountain bikes, but doctor's order says I can't do that anymore for my own safety. Lots of crashes. But this allows me to ride a bike that is big enough for me and comfortable for me and something that I feel like is actually going to be supporting my body weight without an issue. And I can just go out and ride and cruise and get my extra cardio in when I need it. Uh, very smooth ride, very comfortable, quite practical. And I know it's secured because of this mobile app and the actual GSM system that's keeping this thing locked down and secured outstanding performance. Shout out to Van Moof for allowing me to check this out. You can get this on their website, the S3 or the X3. I like this S3 just because of this size. It's available for $19.98 online. We'll have links in the show notes to check that out. We'll also um, allow you to see uh, their website in general, where it has all the other specifications for this bike. It's a very, very nice bike. It's not for everybody, but I think if this is if you're someone that really wants to just eliminate the car because of where you live, you don't have to pay for a bunch of parking and things like that. And if you can get to things fairly quickly, this bike is the way to go. A bike is the way to go. But this e-bike is just another level up on that. All right. Thank you folks so much for watching this week's episode of Hands on Tech. I really do appreciate all the support. Make sure you subscribe to all of our other shows here on the network, specifically hands-on photography, if you don't mind. And uh, we'll catch you next time here on Hands on Tech. Take care. Keep up with all the hottest tech news and gadgets. Visit twit.tv. There you'll be able to find and subscribe to all our tech shows. Thanks for watching Hands on Tech.